When lorry drivers and farmers blockade an oil refinery in protest at the latest rise in petrol prices, it was less easy to spin Blair out of trouble. He seems unable to get the police to focus. It does amount to obstruction, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And usually, things that obstruct the road are removed by the police? Normally, yes. And in this situation? In this situation, we're not going to move it at this stage, no. Tony said at one point that if this was Thatcher and the miners, the police would waste no time waiting in. Protesters pushed their point until the country had almost come to a standstill. And then they called off their action. Tony felt the media coverage had been an outrage, but he didn't want to say so publicly. It had felt absolutely terrible at the centre, an almost palpable feeling of a gulf opening between government and country. It was far from an ideal scenario for a government entering what would be an election year. Tony was both buoyant and down, down about some of the realities but buoyant because he felt we were doing the right things and making progress. And also because he had resigned himself to the idea that if we lost, we lost. And it wasn't the end of the world. He had clearly been chatting to his maker again. Four months later, the outlook is no more optimistic. Mandelson has resigned for a second time and Campbell is under huge pressure from Fiona to give up his job. I told Tony I was feeling tired and demotivated. I felt I'd given him my best for several years, and I no longer felt on top form, and I wasn't convinced I would recover it. He felt election years always produced this kind of mood. Promised we would be strengthened by a second mandate. Fiona and I had a fight in the car on the way home because it was obvious I was going to stay. The scene was bad all round. Five more cases of foot and mouth disease have been confirmed today. The crisis is spreading across the country. An outbreak of foot and mouth disease paralyzes the countryside and puts paid to political plans. Having carefully weighed all the arguments, I've decided that the national interest is best served by postponing these elections until June the 7th. Despite the enforced slaughter of livestock and sense of crisis, the government is still well ahead in the polls. Tony said he didn't know how long he wanted to stay in the job, but he felt Gordon was imagining he would go halfway through the second term. The look on his face made it clear Gordon had no chance of that. He seemed genuinely unsure about a third election, but I suspected he would go for it if we had a decent majority second time around. Blair finally asks for the dissolution of Parliament and kicks off Labour's campaign at a school in South London. Tony said he still wasn't properly psyched. Maybe once we were out on the road he would get into it. They weren't voters, but pupils from a Southwark secondary school lined up for his visit, and they treated him like a pop star. Earlier today, I saw the Queen of Buckingham Palace to ask for a dissolution of Parliament. It was a bit odd that he was doing a big number on the importance of voting to a group of people he couldn't vote. My goal at this election is this. It is not just to win your vote. It is to win your heart and your mind. There was a bit of a scrum outside and the media were pretty cynical about the whole event. But I thought it was just about okay. Mind you, how we kept this cynical bunch of wackers Interested for four weeks of this was a question I didn't like to think about too often. Labour is now desperate to give the campaign a bounce. The manifesto launch is meant to provide it, but luck is running against them. 
the partner of a very ill patient, confronts Blair on a hospital visit. I'd like to know what your Labour government is going on to do. My partner has cancer. I asked Tony how bad it was. Bad, he said. Bad enough to blow out the manifesto launch? Definitely, he said. I did my best to talk things down, but when I finally saw the exchanges, I realised we had no chance. And then John Prescott retaliates when a bloke in the crowd throws an egg at him. I felt instinctively there would be a lot of support for JP, but also that he should say he wished he hadn't responded like that. He was not up for it one bit, said the guy was a total twat. Said it was bloody ridiculous that we had to take all this shit from people just because we were politicians. And he would not be apologising. I admired him for it. The manifesto was disappearing down a plug hole. With two days to go before polling, Tony Blair should be supremely confident. Yet there remains an uneasiness about his campaign. The campaign never did pick up, though they were still on course for victory. We had been saved because the Tories and Hague were so useless, because Tony had been okay on the road, and because we just about gripped the centre. But we were kidding ourselves if we thought it was a good campaign. I think we've had a very good campaign, and that's a tribute to an awful lot of people who worked in that campaign. But I think, as people have said for years and years and years, campaigns are won right throughout... Woke up feeling really tired and went for a run. Loved the feeling of being out on my own with the wind gusting every now and then. And feeling I'd done all I could, and though it had not been perfect, we were definitely going to win. Tony Blair arriving after... Tony told me earlier he would be more confident because the second mandate is in some ways more powerful than the first. Plus he had learned and had experience of how to work the system. Why can't the moment of winning just be enjoyed? Tony, because he's straight off focusing on the next thing. Me, because of some general dourness defect that kicked in when everyone else was enjoying themselves. Weird. Labour is back in government and back in business. But there's no time to pause and take stock. Problems have not evaporated. After working round the clock for a few weeks, going the last few days without sleep, I was now straight back on the treadmill, and in circumstances where, because I was staying, Fiona and I were barely speaking, and when we did, it was to argue. She said that what made me good for him, driven and single-track and obsessive, is what made it difficult for her. I felt between a rock and a hard place. There were consequences to staying, but there were consequences to leaving too. Peyton f***ing place with knobs on.